Hello everyone, my name is MD Welch and I am doing this quick uh, video tutorial on mastering your manual focus on Sony cameras because if you're like me during this time of the virus and corona and uncertainty, you're probably or hopefully socially distancing yourself, a little bit of self-isolation, which also means you're probably stuck at home or uh, at least confined around your home and uh, you're maybe itching to start to photograph things. In my case, I'm doing a lot of still life work, uh, a lot of macro work, getting out away from people, maybe going to the occasional landscape. And all of that requires hyper accurate autofocus. Now, if we look at my setup here, I actually have two Sony cameras set up uh, for this uh, particular endeavor. I have an A7R Mark IV, and then I have an A7R Mark III. And we'll wait for autofocus to catch up here. There we go. And uh, I have these two cameras set up. Now the a7R III, and by the way, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the tops of both of these cameras, and that's just to go to the recorder, so we have something to uh, be able to push out on the internet. Now, uh, in the case of the a7R IV, it is running a Sony native lens, in this case, a 85 millimeter G Master 1.4, and the a7R Mark III is running a uh, Canon 100 millimeter macro lens with a Sigma adapter. And I'm gonna cover how to master the different options and get more out of your autofocus, well, actually your manual focus on both of these cameras with their workarounds. Now, our scene or our setup is gonna be pretty simple. We're just working with two bottles of water on the table and we're gonna be focusing on the text of the water bottles here. So first of all, let's just talk a little bit about what Sony offers you if you're all Sony and native mount. Now I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna hit my FN button here, my function button, and you should have the ability to change your focus mode in this menu. You can customize this menu, and if you have and you've removed this, you might have to go looking for it. But right now, I'm in a mode called DMF, and I'm gonna explain that in just one second. But we have three default modes here. We have AF-S, which is a single autofocus. Once it locks on, it stays there, but if your subject moves, you have to re-autofocus. AF-A, which is for autofocus automatic, it kind of goes between AF-S and also AF-C, which is continuous autofocus, the focus mode for things that are moving. Now, for many people who are shooting, say, macros or landscapes, they are using AF-S, they're gonna hit a focus point, they're gonna hold down the focus button, they're gonna get focus locked, as we see here, and the text of the bottle becomes focused through autofocus here. But for a lot of times when you're looking for hyper accurate focus or you're in difficult lighting situations, you might find that AF-S is not as accurate as you want it to be or you want to double check it at least. Now you could throw the camera in manual mode and I'm gonna show you some great tips and tricks on manual mode in just one second. But really Sony has anticipated this and they've given you a great option. And that option is this DMF mode. So I'm gonna come back into here, function, come down and I'm gonna go into dynamic manual focus. Now what dynamic manual focus is, it's essentially the best of both worlds. It's AF-S, so I still hold down my, in my case, I, by the way, I'm using back, back button focusing here, not the shutter button, but you could hold down the shutter button too. I'll hold that down and I'll get a little lock on here and it'll show me that I have my lock on with my autofocus. And I can continue to autofocus that way. But one additional feature here, and I'll just kind of bring this up so you can kind of see this, and autofocus on the ring, is that if I also hold down the autofocus button, get autofocus, and then touch the manual focusing ring on a Sony native lens, there I can say it, on a Sony native lens, I could actually dial in the manual focusing and make sure that I'm absolutely spot on with my autofocus. The minute that I release whatever button that I'm using for autofocus, in my case, back button focusing, I go back to the normal mode and the camera zooms out. Now, if you're using an autofocus point and you're zoomed in, you can, once you touch this, once you touch the focusing wheel here, you can move this around. It's a little bit difficult uh, to do, but you can also reposition this while you're zoomed in or wherever your autofocus point is, you could put that autofocus point where you want to really direct the focus, set your autofocus first by holding down your focus or your shutter button, and then rotate your ring and go ahead and dial in your focus there. Now, this is really powerful because this means you don't really have to go back into manual mode if you want to be hyper accurate on your autofocus. 
and it also means that you're going to get the best of both worlds because you're going to have autofocus available to you whenever you want, but then you could also touch that focusing ring on a Sony native lens and you could zoom in and check your manual focus. And this is, again, this is great, especially during this time where we're probably doing a lot of macro photography, we're doing a lot of product photography, still life work or landscape work. This is a fantastic mode to be in. Now, a few customized things that you might want to take into account. First of all, you could use peaking here, and I have a customized button set up for peaking, and I could turn peaking on, and then that way when I zoom in and I get my autofocus going, I can see when I have my autofocus dialed in and getting the peaking. And I think I'm just a little too close. I'm just going to back up my camera just a touch here and then redo this. So we'll get autofocus, there we go. And you could just see the edges of that red come through. Sometimes peaking doesn't, isn't as clear as I would like it to be. You can adjust that, but that works out pretty well. And you could see that mode. Now, another thing that you might wanna do, because what can throw this off is if you leave your shutter button into the shooting and focusing function as well. So if I come into the menu here, and go into my menu setting here. And of course, there's a lot of people who don't like Sony's menus and it does take a little bit of getting used to, but you can actually come in and change this by going into the first camera menu. So this is the red tab or camera one, and then you could go into the autofocus, autofocus two, which is actually page six, and you could come down and you could see here that I've used autofocus with shutter and I've turned that off, which your autofocus on button on the back of the camera will automatically autofocus out of the box. So you don't have to worry about this all that much. And the benefit of this is that you've separated your shooting from your focusing, and this also doesn't cause the camera to re-autofocus after you've achieved that great manual focus look. So these are two really good settings to play around with. By the way, if you wanna customize your settings here for peaking or any other button, go into the camera icon number two here, and you're gonna come down and you're gonna go almost towards the end to page nine. And you're gonna do customize keys here. And on the series four, what's nice about this, and this is the series four menu system, is that when you come into here, you will actually get a diagram or layout of where these buttons are on the camera, which is really nice in the series four Sony cameras here, also on the A9 series two. So uh, I could come into here and you'll see that I have the top set, I have uh, the custom or C1 button in metering mode and C2 set to peaking or display select. So I have that ability or feature there as well. Now, again, I can't stress this enough. This is with a Sony lens on a Sony camera. Now I do, haven't tested any native Sony lenses from third-party manufacturers. So say Sigma's art series that there's a lot of Sony E-mounts, I don't have that ability at the moment to test that out. And it, this might work in those particular modes. But I wanna show you a workaround if you are working on a, uh, another system or another lens systems and you're using an adapter. So let's go over here and we're gonna come over to the system uh, or the Mark III AR, so AR Mark III here, and we'll go ahead and do this. Now, again, I am kind of limited here by my options because of the lens that I have. Now I could throw the lens and I'm just gonna hit the switch on the side here. I'm gonna throw it into autofocus and then I'm gonna come in and hit my autofocus button here. And it does a pretty good job of getting autofocus. But the problem is, is if I hit my function button here and try to come over to AF-S and go to any of the other modes, at this time, and I am using a Sigma adapter, but at this time with a Sigma adapter, at least with this lens, I can't use AF auto, AF continuous, dynamic manual focus. So it's really AF-S uh, for single autofocus or it's manual focus. But that's not that big of a deal, especially because I use, this is my macro lens, and I use this for macro photography, and I'm more often than not in manual focusing mode anyways. But I don't have that feature of dynamic manual focus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in, I'm just gonna flick the switch here, and I'm gonna get out of uh, autofocusing mode. And I just do it through the lens because sometimes you can't do it through the function you saw before. And I'll hit the function button here again that um, manual focus wasn't available. In fact, once you turn it into manual focus, you can't even change it here on the function dial. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use another feature here. And this is what's called focus assist. So I'll get out of this. Uh, let's just hit the menu here. There we go. 
and I'm gonna hit a button on my camera. Now, in my case, I've customized my AEL, or Auto Exposure Lock button for this, and I'll show you how to do this in one moment. But when I hit this, notice now that I have this orange box, and now if I hit my center button on my control wheel, it will zoom in here, and I already have peaking on, so we'll see if peaking's a little bit more noticeable. There it is. See that, there you go. And, um, and I could see that text become hyper sharp. And if I hit the center button one more time, it'll even jump further into the magnification. I think it's about six times magnification at this particular point. And I could get hyper accurate focus this way, which is really nice. And of course I'm shaking my tripod at the exact same time. So I apologize if I'm making anybody motion sick. If I hit the center button one more time, it zooms me out or takes me back into my full screen mode and I could go ahead and take a picture and, um, and check my manual focus in that particular case. Now, in, on the A7 Series 3, uh, to find this, and it's very similar to the Series 4, and I'll show you this in just one second because I want to show you one last thing. To uh, use this, first of all, the auto focus or manual focus functions are found in the same Camera One menu or the red tab and this is technically called focus magnifier. So focus magnifier could actually be accessed through the menu at any time, but I highly recommend setting up a customized button for it, especially if you're working with a lot of third-party lenses because it is so useful and you're gonna use it so much, you don't wanna to have to keep you know, going through any menu system uh, to find this. So what you could do is I'll come back up to my tab, I'll come into uh, the second camera menu system here, and I'll move almost all the way to the end, and I could go to Customize Key. And by the way, I kind of skipped over this on the previous menu. The first icon there is for still photography, the second is for movies, and the third is for playback. So if you are working um, in movies and you want your customized keys to be different, you could program them that way. Uh, that's really powerful. It can be a little confusing at first, so customize a little bit at a time. It'll keep your sanity. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the third section and you'll see that I have the AEL button set to focus magnifier. I don't use AEL on my camera hardly at all because Sony has movable spot tied to the autofocus and that's for another video, but it allows me to just have a button that I can hit quickly and go into mo uh, focus magnifier and be able to make those adjustments. Now, if, um, I wanted to do something similar on a Sony lens. Sony has a really cool system, and I'll come back over here and come into my Mark IV. And again, it should be pointed out that almost all of my buttons are the same function from both camera systems here. Now, what's interesting about the Mark IV, or actually not the Mark IV, I apologize. What's interesting about if you have a Sony native lens on the camera. So in this case, again, I'm using an actual Sony manufactured lens. I can attest for Tamron or Sigma with the native Sony mount here. But what's nice about this is, is if I put my camera in a manual focusing mode, and I'm just gonna come into function here, I'm gonna go out of DMF, I'll put it into manual focus, I'll just do it through the camera here. But I also have a switch on the 85, which I really like. And truth be told, I much rather use the switch on the side of the lens. It's just easier because I have my hand there usually when I'm shooting, but Again, personal preference is totally up to you. But here's what's interesting. If I now come in and while I'm in manual focus, and I'll just set this up so you can see the focusing ring here. While in manual focus, if I come in and touch the focusing ring at all, notice how it just jumps here on the camera to automatically go in and zoom in at that hyper level. Right? And this is a fantastic feature here because now what you could do is maybe you don't like dynamic manual focus, you're not a big fan of it, but you could have the camera automatically do a jump in when you're in manual focus and see that hyper level of detail that you need to get hyper accurate levels of focus here. Now, where is this found? If you go into the menu setting and you come back into the camera uh, number one here, and I'll show you on both camera systems, they're pretty much in the exact same area. And by the way, Sony has gotten much better with their menus. A lot of people still don't like their menu system. They're pretty good about their menus. So there's a whole autofocus section, but you have to go past that, go past that to exposure, past that to flash, to processing, and you'll come into focus assist. 
That's what you're actually looking for here. This is where focus magnifier, you could also set how long you want that focus magnification time. You could actually have it turn off after a few seconds. In my case, I set it to no limit because I want it to be there as long as I need it to. You could also change how much the focus magnification jumps into when you're using focus magnification. So if you didn't want to have the two cycle, you could have it just jump, in this case, to 5.9 on the Series 4. I think it's like 6.2 on the Series 3. Um, you also have autofocus uh, in focus magnification. Autofocus can be done as well. But the big thing here is manual focus assist. If you have this turned on, that is what is happening when you hit that manual focusing ring here on the camera. So if you don't have that turned on, let's go ahead and just turn this off here. And again, the camera is in manual focusing mode. We'll come back into the camera. If I touch the focusing ring on this Sony native lens, notice that it will still manually focus, right? We still get that, but we don't get that jump in. We don't get that assist, which really is uh, probably not a good idea. So I'll just come back in here, I'll turn it on, and then come back into the camera. And then we'll see my hand hitting this here. And there we go. Very nice feature uh, to work with. So, um, and the same is true on the Series 3. If I hop into its menu, you'll see here if I come over to, so a page 13 of the same camera menu system, there's manual focus uh, set to on. So again, some very powerful ways to do uh, manual focus, manual focus assist, dynamic manual focus on Sony cameras. Gonna give you that hyper level of accuracy with your focusing. Great for landscapes, great for still life, great for macro work, as long as you don't have the wind blowing things around. I think it's a very powerful feature that not enough Sony users know about. So um, do you keep that in mind when you're working on your system? So that wraps up this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know. Also, let me know if you're interested in other techniques with the Sony system, uh, other things that maybe you're kind of confused about or looking to learn. Um, I hope you are staying healthy. I hope your friends and your family are healthy as well, staying safe during these times, and I wish you all the best.